Hey all, Blake here with another video. And as you may or may not be aware, I'm building a brand new fish room which is gonna be on auto water changes. If you're keen to see that happen, definitely hit subscribe because it won't be until sort of mid to late this year that we move in there. But I've been thinking about how to introduce automatic water changes into the fish room and I don't necessarily wanna drill holes in all my fish tanks. So today we're gonna to build a overflow out of PVC so that you can constantly drip water in or set up automatic water changes without having to drill your aquariums. It's a fairly simple and easy project that I'm going to explain in a way that hopefully anyone can go ahead and do it. So if you've always thought about automatic water changes but you've never wanted to drill your aquarium for whatever reason may be, well hopefully you enjoy this video. Let's jump straight into it. Okay, so to get started, I've got here everything we're going to need for this project. We've got some clear vinyl tubing, we've got some PVC cement to glue this together. Although it isn't strictly necessary, we've got some PVC pipe. We have a barbed fitting here to connect our vinyl tubing to. We've got two T's, uh, three 90 degree elbows and two end caps. As well as that, in terms of tools, you can get away with a hacksaw, but I've got some PVC cutters here. And similarly, it's not 100% uh, necessary, but I've got a step drill bit here because we're gonna drill a few holes. You can, if you've got some ordinary uh, drill piece sets, you can just stagger and keep making it bigger until you've got a hole of your desire, but step drills are gonna be way faster and easier. And of course, it's gonna be hard to drill a hole without a drill, so just a cordless drill. Most of us should have them lying around the house. So that's all that we're going to need. I think it totaled up about, you know, $30 maybe. But any hardware store should carry all of these things. So the principle behind how this uh, overflow is going to work is we want something that's going to have a constant siphon. This clear vinyl tubing here is going to be full of water 24 seven. And we need to set it up in a way that it constantly has to be submerged. And that's what we're going to have this PVC section do. First things first, we need to cut our PVC uh, into our desired lengths. I've, I'm using 25mm PVC here, but you can use whatever size you like. You'll have to gauge it depending on how much water you're going to put through the system. What we're going to do is just cut some sections here so that we can allow a PVC section to go up and into the aquarium. Um, it should become clearer as you watch through the video, so um, if it's a bit intimidating, don't worry. It'll sh hopefully um, form a bit more of a clear picture as we get through. Okay, so we've got our four pieces cut now, as you can see, one, two, three, four. And we've got a bit of spare, so always hang on to that because it is handy for the next project. So this short piece here that I cut off, this is gonna be the bottom piece. So the next thing we place our T-piece, I've got actually a T-piece with uh, threads on it in there. You can see just some threads. And that's where I'm gonna thread on this barbed fitting here, which is gonna attach to our vinyl hose. Then we have, you know, just another small section here we have our 90 degree elbow. So what we've assembled so far is what's basically gonna hang outside of your aquarium. So water is gonna be filled up to this level here where it's gonna go out of vinyl tubing into you know, an outlet. You probably have a piece of pipe or something that this will go into and drain to a drain. So now we need to figure out what we're gonna put inside our aquarium. And for that, we basically have another short section here with another 90 degree elbow connect that over there. Now this width here is going to be determined by whether you've got a rimless tank, a brace tank, you can basically cut this section in the middle to the desired length. From this point here there's basically two ways that we can look at building our overflow. First of all we can just simply have a straight section with an end cap like this and place that on like so. And then to determine the height, we just use our step drill piece to drill wherever we want the uh, water to flow out of the aquarium. If that's a bit more permanent and you want something that is gonna be a bit more adjustable, there is a method that you can use to do that, where you put a smaller piece there with a T section, another short section and the, um, <laughs> the end cap. Then you just cut a very small piece like so connect it to another 90 degree elbow, just like this. And then you can have, obviously it wouldn't be this long, but you have this PVC piece. And if you want the water level to be higher or lower, then you just twist the elbow like so, and it will change the height of the water that's gonna drain out of your aquarium. 
So you don't have to glue this piece at all and it just gives that level of flexibility um, and it's not as permanent as drilling a hole. It might look a lot more clunky, clunky and to be honest it probably is, but you can also just turn the T off to the side so in the aquarium you're just going to see sort of something like this. Also white PVC like this is pretty obvious in the aquarium and looks pretty ugly. So what I would recommend doing is actually spraying it down with black Plasti Dip. Black Plasti Dip comes in a spray can and it's easy to apply and it's sort of a spray paint slash rubber material. Um, I have used it in my aquariums before and I found it to be totally safe. So you, you could feel free to use that. If you want a cheaper alternative to this, you might have an old gravel vac lying around. You can use that tubing. You might have a garden hose that you can pinch the end of and um, you could use that as well. But I just thought it would be as easy to uh, use clear vinyl tubing and that way I can actually visually check and make sure that it is still in siphon. So I'm just going to cut off a small piece of this now and I'll show you what we're going to do with that. So the idea between the clear vinyl tubing is we're going to place it down inside this PVC pipe. So what we need to do is cut, is drill some holes in the top that we can thread the uh, vinyl tubing through. It doesn't have to be airtight because we're not creating the siphon within the PVC pipe. It's going to be within the tubing. So you want it to be snug, but it doesn't have to be um, super, super airtight. So don't worry too much. Okay, so now that we've got our holes drilled right in the top here, we can thread our uh, vinyl tubing through, but actually cut it on 45 degree angles at the end so that it doesn't go flat on the bottom there because that will potentially get in the way of our siphon because there is going to be suction going through here. So cut it on a 45 degree angle so that water can always pass through even if it's touching the bottom. So that's how I've cut them just on you know, roughly 45 degree angles there. Now we're going to thread them through the holes that we've just drilled all the way down to the bottom. What you really need to do is make sure of a couple of things. First of all, you need to make sure that the vinyl tubing goes past this line, uh, ideally all the way to the bottom, but anywhere in here is going to be fine. And similarly, it's got to go past the either the hole or the top of the um, overflow level that you're going to set on the other side as well. Okay, so a couple of things that we've got to do now. First of all, you might want to place some thread tape on this thread here just so it doesn't leak. It's definitely always a good idea and it's really cheap and accessible. So I'll place some thread tape on there. And also what I'm going to do is glue all of this side here up until this uh, down piece here. And then we'll get it filled up and test it out. Okay, so to get this started, what we want to do is get all of the air out of this vinyl tubing. It's probably best to just submerge it, everything underwater. Then once all the air is out of the vinyl tubing and the PVC, slide it all the, way, all the way down to the bottom. It should always be in siphon, even when the water inevitably gets drained past this hole here, flowing through there down to the bottom, getting sucked up through this siphon, filling up here and then going out down into the bucket. You can see there's no more water flowing through there. So what I'll show you is we'll move the whole system over into this aquarium next door, which has a slightly higher water level. You'll be able to see me move the whole thing. No tricks involved. I'll just take the bucket where it's draining to pick the whole system up, move it straight across. And just like that, water is once again flowing through that hole up and around and draining out into the bucket. I'll show you now the system with the adjustable height. So all I've done here is just change the method on the end to the adjustable height uh, method. It's not glued once again and we've just taken all the air out of the system as you can see from this vinyl tubing. Connected it down to the outflow there. So now I'll just take off this inlet here so that the um, water level is below the inlet level and we should start to see water draining out once again. So for one more demonstration, just in case it's not clear enough, I've brought it outside here just to show the um, going and stopping of flow and that it's a continuous siphon. So what we've got here, I've got a hose here that is connected to 
a indoor tap so we can let some water in. This here, I've just brought the whole unit out here and as you can see there, it's siphoning away. It isn't gonna be as fast as town water in these dimensions, so this vinyl tubing here, which is about the usual size that you get with your gravel vacs, where if you want something that is gonna be able to keep up with the pressure of sort of mains town water, well, you're gonna need bigger vinyl tubing here and probably bigger uh, PVC pipe as well. But for this demonstration here, I'll just turn on some of the water, bring the water level up, show you here that the water is flowing out how it's supposed to be. We'll let it drain down past uh, the level of the hole that we've created here, just to show you that it will remain in siphon. And then we'll put some more water in just to show you that it's gonna work. A couple of notes as well. You wanna have the two end caps roughly the same level or this one below that one if possible. Because if that one's higher, I found that it does occasionally break siphon. Not every time, but occasionally. So make sure the end cap inside the fish tank is below the one outside the fish tank. We'll let it go until it stops. A few more seconds. And there we go. So the flow has clearly stopped there. There's no cuts in this video. We'll turn the water back on. And there we go. We're back uh, siphoning again. So I hope you really like this video. Um, I know a lot of people contemplate setting up automatic water changes and are a bit daunted with the task of drilling aquariums. If you've got any further questions, be sure to drop them down below. Um, I always enjoy engaging with you guys. Other than that, hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, it always helps me out to smash like, hit subscribe and all that fun stuff. And I'll catch you on the next one. Thanks for watching.